Hello and welcome everybody for joining us on this awesome episode of Talking Shit with Heather. Today's special guest is George Capitanos. He is a fellow FDN like myself and his company is called Sleuth Wellness. And the topic today is warning is mold behind your mel- uh, health mystery. Say that 10 times fast. Um, and the 12 steps to the road to recovery, right? So amazing that we get a little bit of a roadmap today, right? So I'm Heather Gray with Discovering Health. I'm a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. I like working with um, folks with autoimmune, Lyme, mold, right? Gut issues, mental health issues. And talking shit, where does that come from? Uh, The name is kind of a tongue in cheek, right? Twofold. So the first part is that I am a practitioner and I get sometimes other practitioners on here. And sometimes we will literally talk about shit, coffee enemas, parasites, bacteria, you know, whatever it takes to get somebody healthy. And then the other part of it is that a lot of us that are in this space are got here because we have our own like shit storm, right? We have our own shit story and people don't heal when that type of stuff stays in the dark. And so the reason for this show is we'd like to bring that stuff out to the light, right? Bring the shit to the light so that it can be healed. Um, And that way people feel like that they're not alone and that they're not crazy because a lot of times uh, folks that have been chronically ill have been gaslighted so much that that's, you know, what they're told. And so that was what I was told. Um, And I imagine George has probably got a similar story, especially, you know, what I know from mold and my own, you know, story with mold. It's, uh, it's quite the insidious little MRFer. So this will be a good show, George. I'm excited to have you on. So tell us, tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, what you do and what, like I said, your shit story and what kind of brought you here and, and the 12 steps. Look forward to sharing that. Um, it's true what Heather says. My name is George Capitanos. I'm founder of Sleuth Wellness and I help my clients solve their health mysteries. Um, most of them are parents like me with health issues that prevent them from being the moms and dads they always thought they'd be before they had kids. In my case, I had uh, anger and irritability issues for no particular reason. Um, And whether their issues are more straightforward like mine were, like finding their ideal weight or regaining their youthful energy, restoring their positive mood, or more complex ones um, like living with MS, uh, a debilitating Um, autoimmune disease, the FDA and approach I use with the clients seems to transform their health and get them feeling like themselves again. Um, And today I want to highlight how functional diagnostic nutrition, as Heather mentioned, the certification we both share, um, was able to get to the bottom of and resolve my wife's serious health issues. So um, just to give you a little background, My wife, Lydia, once seemed like the absolute picture of health. She's one of those annoying people who um, gets right out of bed when the alarm rings with a positive attitude and gets to her chores. Um, At one point, she was a massage therapist full time. She could do multiple clients a day and come home with uh, plenty of energy for fun at the end of that. And that, of course, made her a fantastic mom to, uh, to our son and allowed her to continue her healing practices and, and earn a certification in accessible yoga instructing um, while raising a, a toddler. She did have some health issues. She wasn't sleeping particularly well um, and she was easily awakened through the night um, at the slightest noise and her, her fuse started to shorten, but we chalked it up to, to being a mom. Um, But just as her yoga career was beginning, uh, a respiratory issue that that was once transitory and just kind of a nuisance from time to time began taking her out of the game more and more frequently um, until she was forced to stop teaching altogether. She couldn't even get through uh, a short class without her shortness of breath and coughing fits preventing her from um, delivering them. So uh, she became reliant on an inhaler as a result. And um, in time, the onslaught of these symptoms affected her ability to uh, handle her responsibilities even as a mom. She spent more and more time exhausted and coughing and struggling to breathe. Then the headaches came and they became very frequent, um, often reaching migraine status. Her muscles and joints started aching, brain fog took over, 
uh, and she started to experience some strange skin sensations um, at night. She described it as like a light crawling sensation on her skin. Um, she was also having, by this point, frequent urination, um, another thing to wake her up in the middle of the night. And a lung specialist she'd been to in the past um, just put her on, you know, after the usual tests, prednisone, uh, you know, a, a steroidal, a, um, um, a steroid that's an anti-inflammatory, um, and gave her inhalers, which were also steroids, um, but really couldn't explain the origin of her symptoms. Um, shortly before he retired, though, he offered that maybe her condition could be aspergillosis, which is a reaction to a mold found in the soil, but he said there's nothing really you can do about it because that's everywhere. And that wait, was really wait. that. <clears throat> so you actually did have a doctor, did, did actually use the M word in the beginning? He actually he used this word. But, but he didn't he, actually take it any further. He dismissed it out of hand. And, and it, was, um, it was a last ditch. It wasn't even really a diagnosis. It was a maybe, a possibly. But there's nothing you can do anyway kind of, kind of thing. Gotcha. So we, we left it there. Unfortunately, I wasn't an FDN at the time or I would have already been investigating the situation and uh, handling her health uh, foundationally as we do with an eye toward what her cluster of symptoms might have meant. Um, it did prompt us to buy a home test kit from the Home Depot, um, but the results were unremarkable because many times these tests you buy at big box stores are, are unreliable. Um, and that was a big, big miss at the time, because our, our previous house, we're in a different house now, uh, probably had mold in it as well. So her health continues to deteriorate. Um, and then we found a sewage leak under our, our old house um, that was caused by a leaky pipe. And that kind of let an imperceptible drip of methane gas fumes into our home. And when it was fixed, her symptoms resolved for a long time, for, for months. Um, and we thought we'd cracked the code, but um, slowly but surely they made a return and we scratched our heads again and watched her get progressively worse, now even uh, worse than before. Oh, wow. By this time, I was in the midst of my FDN certification and began incorporating healing strategies in the areas that we work in, diet, rest, uh, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation uh, for my wife and my son as well. And... Um, after some hormone and metabolic function, uh, functional testing that we did, I was able to identify some opportunities that Lydia could exploit to feel better. Um, and the quality and duration of her sleep improved uh, immensely, along with her energy and mood. Um, and even the coughing and shortness of breath dissipated significantly. So the FDN approach was working, and I was very proud of that. It's amazing um, what happens, right? When you lay down that foundation to begin with, like it's, it was incredible, even in the Lyme world, it pisses me off because all the Lyme, even the Lyme literate doctors, they just want to go to straight to treat, 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 treat. And then people get so freaking sick. And I'm, I'm over here saying the opposite going wait, actually, no, don't treat yet. Let, let's look at the foundation. Back it up. How many folks can you, you know, out there understand anything like that? Have you just been put on medications and drugs, but, you know, never explained really how you should eat or sleep or, you know, exercise or any of the above, right? How many of you can, can identify with that? So, yeah, thank you for bringing that in, George. Go ahead. Yeah, um, so things were working fairly well until um, two major stressful events occurred. One was the death of a young nephew, which was traumatic. Um, which included a cross-country trip with our six-year-old to attend the funeral. And uh, that was followed by the sale of our home at the time and a subsequent move to our current one. So, uh, you know, as FDNs, we're always on the lookout for stressful events like this, but it, it doesn't really uh, take being one to know that this can negatively affect your health. And these events definitely caused a backslide. Um, and I was wondering, you know, okay, there was a stressful event, but you know, nothing that was working before is allowing her to continue to heal. Um, you know, what was I supposed to do? So 
We did uh, visit another lung specialist and that yielded very few answers, um, except that my wife had very high immunoglobulin counts in the blood, which indicated that her immune system was you know, on high alert to something. Um, and his answer, of course, was to prescribe prednisone and pharmaceutical uh, um, anti-inflammatories. Let's suppress that immune system. Sure, and uh, some more steroidal inhalers sure. and wait. So I did what any FDN does and I dug deeper. Um, we already cleaned up her diet, as I said, and we did some food sensitivity testing to remove those. We uh, improved her sleep hygiene even more, um, avoiding blue light at night and committing to bedtimes between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Um, we had her doing what exercise her body could support at the time, and that included walking with a lot of buteco breath work um, that a fellow FDN recommended during, uh, during her walks. And that piece alone was, was really a lifeline during this whole process. Um, to get her through her days upright and, you know, instead of uh, horizontal all day. Um, she continued with her meditation and yoga and that helped with the stress, but it was really time to test again and to cast a wider net and find all the hidden stressors that were working uh, inside her body that we could. Um, and we also had to take a very hard look at the environment. We'd moved to her mother's former home and um, that afforded my son better, better schools, but the house had a lot of wall-to-wall -wall carpeting mm -hmm. and heavy drapery, and that harbors, as you know, a lot of allergens. So we promptly got rid of all those. Uh, unfortunately, it did little to move the needle for Lydia. And we peeled back a lot of layers of this onion that is Lydia's health. Uh, and the next one to rule out was mold itself. Was there mold in the new abode? And um, in functional health circles, one of the gold standards for environmental testing is gravity plate testing from a company called Immunolytics. It's little Petri dishes that we put around the house. We also put them in our attic in our crawl space, um, wrapped them up, sent them back to the lab and, and see what came up. Our suspicions were confirmed. Um, the most concerning levels of hazardous mold were under our house in the dirt crawl space. Goes back to that aspergillus dirt mold. Um, the attic also had some levels that were concerning, but no one species of mold there um, was at hazardous levels. Uh, this prompted us to do a second level of environmental testing known as AIRME. Um, that's from another company called uh, Envirobiomics. And AIRME is an environmental relative moldiness index reading. Um, that's like a Swiffer pad that you <clears throat> run around the home in different areas. Um, this time we were careful to also include our AC and return, uh, AC return vent and other ducting in the house um, as was recommended by an FDN I was speaking to. Now the results of this test were much more damning than the gravity plates. And uh, we came out with the highest level of exposure of Q4, meaning that the source and cause of the mold had to be determined and remediation undertaken. This also meant that the do-it-yourself portion of our environmental testing had stopped and Envirobiomics recommended we call in the Mold Guy Inc. to pinpoint the actual areas of the contamination so we could get rid of them. And we booked, we booked them right away. Um, a number of molds on the Swiffer sample uh, were ones that grow as a result of water damage, including Aspergillus and Penicillium. Um, so a bit of delving into the history of the house found that indeed a, a water heater had ruptured while the family was on vacation back in the 80s. Um, and even though the, the water had dried, it was never really dealt with properly at the time. Um, and, and mold continues to grow, which most people don't know, even after a water damage is long gone, long dried up. Uh, that's why our recent uh, National Academy of Sciences nationwide study found that 43% of all buildings in the U.S. have some current water damage and 85% of them had some past history of water damage. So you can imagine how many people are dealing with mold and don't even know it. It really comes down to, to how much and how fast it's spreading and who in the house is sensitive to the mycotoxins to begin with because 
there are a lot of some, uh, symptoms of mold illness, but you could have just one or two of it, one or two of them, and not really equate them to um, mold sensitivity. Absolutely. That's part of the reason I started running like DNA tests on almost all my clients with some of these mystery illnesses, because some it, mm. a lot of times that answers in our DNA, like I don't have the genetics to detox mold. So I'm one of those that's like a you know canary in the coal mine. I walk into a building and I'm like, mm. I, can't, I can't be in here. Right. Yeah. And so that explains like when you see the family like yourself, because did you ever get sick from any of these issues or your son? Well, I have some sinus issues. Right. But uh I have for a long time, so I don't, I don't think about them in terms of mold. I'm not coughing. I'm not doubled over. I'm not struggling for breath. So I'm not mold sensitive. That's probably not true. <laughs> my, my son has some science issues too. Oh, gotcha. um, inflammation, uh, uh, swollen adenoids and tonsils. Um, and we've been working against surgery for years to combat that. Was mold part of that? I'm sure it was. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So um, so we returned to the lung specialist, um, excited to show him all of these tests, all of the testing results we'd done. And um, his blood work continued to show high immunoglobulin levels. And now he'd done a bronchoscopy, which sampled the mucus uh, blockage that was in her lung. And what did they find? Aspergillus and penicillium. Oh, geez. And okay, this did not, still not prompt him to treat for mycotoxin illness. It wasn't on his radar. And he really admitted that he didn't, he wasn't familiar with mycotoxin illness. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you, you, you found two of them um, in her lung. And he didn't even entertain the, uh, more general diagnosis of Sears, uh, chronic inflammatory respiratory syndrome, which you often um, find in mold cases. Uh, he just wanted to keep writing prescriptions for prednisone and inhalers. Okay, because God. that was the first line of defense in this case. So um, after weeks with no improvement, um, he finally reluctantly wrote a prescription for itraconazole, which is a, a pharmaceutical antifungal that I mentioned to him a lot of functional doctors working with mold illness and researchers in the space recommend. And he did so reluctantly, but changed course at the site of any minor symptom that Lydia had. Um, so we were never able to really see whether that was going to have an effect or not. And we went back, he wanted to default to the prednisone and um, inhalers again. So uh, by now we've taken immunolytics um, recommendations and encapsulated our entire crawl space, remediated the soil there with a, a, a product called BioClean, which is non-toxic. Um, and this was supposed to prevent uh, any soil-based molds and uh, cladosporium, another mold that we found down there from entering the house. We also put a quiet fan down there that um, kept away condensation to prevent new mold from growing. And we were, you know, having our fingers crossed, hoping that Lydia's suffering would, would end, but it only improved slightly. Um, so when mold is identified in a person's environment and, and you've tried some things and symptoms continue, you always want to find out whether mold has colonized in the body as well. And one of the premier functional labs that we run as FDNs um, is called the OAT, the Organic Acids Test. And um, this gives uh, functional health practitioners like ourselves clues as to how the body is metabolizing everything that goes into it, including toxic substances like mold. And uh, ironically, however, Lydia's mold findings were not a home run for mold exposure because she had good levels for um, oxalates. Mold creates uh, its own form of oxalates. So you're looking for those markers to be high. And you're also looking for the yeast and fungal markers to be high, but they were kind of unremarkable as well. And this occurs from time to time. So it takes uh, an, another level of testing that you can add to the oat called the mycotoxin panel um, to really find out if uh, there are metabolites to mycotoxins. Uh, in the urine. And in fact, we did find some 
um, we found ochratoxin A, which is a metabolite of, how could it be, aspergillus and uh, mycophenolic acid, another one that's, that's a metabolite of penicillium, two things that were found in the bronchoscopy. But we were on our own. <laughs> and um, based on the recommendations from Dr. Shaw, who was the originator of the O test at uh, Great Plains Laboratory and the mycotoxin panel, and many of my FDN colleagues, unfortunately, I didn't know Heather at the time, um, we put together a protocol for Lydia to detoxify from the mold, um, which used supplements that had herbal combinations of antimicrobials, along with her good compliance to uh, eating the clean diet uh, in accordance with her metabolic type, um, her commitment to the bedtimes between 10 and 6, walking, yoga, and continued breath work with the, with the buteco. Um, by this time, the mold guy had pinpointed all of the areas in our home that needed to be remediated, uh, and they found a, a significant colony of black mold, Stachybotrys, which is the, um, the one everyone is so scared of, um, the most hazardous form of mold. Uh, but was, what was really most notable was the sample taken inside our central heating and air unit. Remember, I, I mentioned we Swiffered the, the return vent. Um, it showed very high levels of endotoxins, normally at the level of 1,000 endotoxin units per milligram, you would replace the entire unit. Our system showed 7,000. Ouch. So it had to go and it was replaced. We added some um, UV protection along with it and mold filtration in the unit, which alleviated the need for, um, for filtration units around the house. Um, That's expensive. Oh, it was all very expensive. Um, you know, and you really have to weigh your choices. Like, are you in a family home? Are you in your dream home? If not, the best thing to do would probably be relocate. Um, but you have to test for mold in the place that you're going to relocate to, um, at least with those first two levels of testing before you go anywhere. But in many cases, the most cost effective and least stressful way to deal with something like this is to move. But you have to remove yourself from the mold or the mold from your environment or no healing is going to occur. No amount of, of infrared saunas or uh, binders that you can take or supplementation is going to bring about any healing if, if you're still around your mold exposure all the time. I heard a great analogy from uh, Dr. Bruno, who does clinical correlate, uh, clinical consultations with uh, Vibrant Labs. She says, it's like brushing your teeth and eating Oreos at the same time, <laughs> right? If, if you're living in a moldy environment and, uh, you know, taking all the binders and doing all the stuff, but you're not going to get out of the, the environment. I was like, I love that. I'm going to use that from now on because it totally, I mean, you can see it, right? Like eating Oreos and trying to brush your teeth at the same time. Like Perfect analogy. Right? It's perfect. So um, you also have to reconsider. Uh, you have to consider the uh, relocation costs that are, are going to happen. We relocated to an extended stay hotel, and we didn't test for mold there. Who knows what exposures were there? I know there were plenty of uh, of EMFs, and if anyone's familiar with EMFs, they definitely slow the healing process and and can cause um, cascading health effects in and of themselves. So, you know, she had some setbacks while she was in the hotel too, too, even though we were removed from the main source of exposure. Um, another thing that she had during these cascading health effects were these bouts of uh, severe vomiting and headaches for like 20, 24 to 36 hours. And she had another one of these episodes in the hotel. This could have been a healing crisis. Um, FDNs talk about healing crises all the time. When you start to put the back body back in balance, things that you used to experience can come back. Um, or it also could be as a direct result of the mycotoxins that were still in her body. Um, we don't really know. But um, while we were in the hotel, the remediation company was tearing everything out, scrubbing everything down, not with bleach, um, because bleach can kill all the molds that uh, kill all the molds that actually eat mycotoxins um, 
and it can encourage the growth of mold. It all, it leaves behind mold spores. So you definitely don't want to use bleach. You definitely don't really want to be doing this yourself, especially if you're the mold sensitive person. So we found uh, a contractor that was recommended by Mold Guy Inc. Um, we trusted their recommendation because they're independent. Anyone who says they're going to do mold testing for you and the remediation, that's a conflict of interest that should probably be avoided. Oh, um, beautiful awareness there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we were pretty confident in the in the names that they gave us, and you know we weighed our options with budget and everyone else uh, and everything else, and um, and made the determination to go with them. Um, uh, they'll give you mold guy will give you a recommendation in, in our area and envirobionics will give you a recommendation for the mold testing company company that comes in to pinpoint the mold and they'll be able to give you one in your area for um, qualified remediation pros but but never do the same um, testing and remediation under the same contracting umbrella it's, it's not a good idea that's brilliant how do you go about testing before you move into a spot? Like, what's the best way for that? I, I was actually at a, at a Vibrant um, conference a couple of weeks ago, and one of the doctors spoke about getting a VOC monitor that you can get like off of Amazon. They're about a hundred bucks and you can actually test the walls. And because a, a lot of uh, mold will, will let off that, you know, vol volatile organic compounds. Have you any experience with that? No. Well, um, so when the mold guy came in, they did swab testing, which is just taking a swab directly at what's believed to be the source. And that's after they run an infrared unit around to kind of see behind walls. It's not incredi incredibly reliable, but it does give them an area to start from. Um, they do the swab testing and then they also punch holes in walls and um, take a unit that sucks air from the wall and puts it into a small medium of a kind of a petri dish and that'll give, give a sample of what's being breathed in the air mm. um, that's that's the way they were able to determine things so is there a, a dyi way that like i said if you're going to go look for a new home to live in or a rental we didn't go that route um but but for diy you would do those first two steps you would do the immunolytics uh gravity plate mold testing and then you would do a swiffer and they can turn these tests around in uh, if you want to pay for it in uh, as little as overnight oh okay so, um, i think if you're moving to to an apartment or you're renting anywhere um that's a that's a must to do because you don't want to go to another uh, source of mold for sure yeah um finally it was time to move back in uh, and it had now been uh, mid-June. The remediation was completed in about two months. And unfortunately, we fell in with some unscrupulous contractors <sighs> to rebuild. And that delayed our moving back in for another three months. So we were on top of ourselves in an extended stay hotel for five months. It was extremely stressful and uh, didn't help the healing process much. So. We moved back in right before Christmas and then did some traveling for the holidays um, to visit my parents. Uh, we had to do it. It was after the pandemic <laughs> kept us from seeing them for two years. Mm. Um, and there, of course, their AC system was leaking into the plywood <laughs> of their attic. Uh, they had wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and it sent Lydia uh, back into a, a, another coughing episode. So I was completely discouraged after all this work we'd done um, on the healing. And I was just hanging my hopes that once we got back into this clean environment, our, our healing sanctuary, uh, it would put an end to this long road. And in fact, it finally did. Um, and we breathed a huge sigh of relief. But over the next few months, the, the symptoms dissipated, and now she is completely symptom-free um, from, from all of the coughing, all of the shortness of breath, and has made a lot of strides um, in many other health areas, including um, gut rebuilding. And uh, that will continue to strengthen her immune system. It'll be time to retest here shortly um, 
after we've given our body maybe another month or so to heal, we'll be doing another mycotoxin oat panel and running everything just to see how balanced her body is. So this was all very recent then. This is all very recent. Um, you know, we've, we've really literally just finally come to the end of this har harrowing journey, but um, you really need to weigh your options, you know, um, and, and figure out what the best approach is for you. Um, our house was owned free and clear, so we were able to tap equity to, to make all of these things happen. Um, but, you know, the whole process was, was low six figures. So that's um, just not possible for everyone. Um, but, you know, you start with the initial forms of mold testing and they started at a low price point. And as you progress further with um, professional testing that's in the home, um, that, that whole process will help you to determine what the best move for you is, remediation or relocation. Gotcha. Wow. Unbelievable. What a story. And man, how grateful she's got to be that you were going through FDN when you did. Like, I mean, if you would have continued on that story with the doctor, just putting around, you know, steroids and other drugs, like, no ugh, it's maddening, you know, I, I mean, because you think about it. So you talk a lot about, you know, reactivity and angry, you know, parents, like look what this health stuff had, you know, done to your son's mother. You know, it's a, it's a no wonder that she was react, you know, she probably had some reactivity. She probably didn't, you know, felt some guilt about, you know, being, a, you know, a mother who wasn't well and all that other fun stuff that comes along with it. So, I mean, not only did you give the gift to her, but you've given the gift to your son and, you know, it's just, um, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. Absolutely. Yeah. On that point, um, I forgot to mention this, but um, at one point during the healing journey, she couldn't even read our son a bedtime story, mm. much less play with him. So that was really tough for her and very discouraging. And um, when he would come to me multiple times and say, dad, do you think mom's going to make it? Oh, you know, that, <laughs> that about crushed me, um, especially at those dark times where you're doing the healing work and she's having um, setbacks. You know, these things happen healing from mold. And I'm sure you know, with uh, multiple other layers on top of that, Lyme uh, and mold, and, and which are often confused. I, sure you can speak to that too absolutely absolutely so what do you have coming up what do you have to do you have anything to promote or, or you know well chance to kind of pimp yourself what do you got for us george i went through um 12 steps that we took to recovering from mold and um i do have it as a list that i can um give to the listeners of this podcast you can email me at george capitanos at sleuth wellness i'm sure heather can put it in the uh, show notes, uh, George Capitanos at sleuthwellness.com. And I'll send you the 12 steps you can take to help you on your road to recovery from mold. Um, I'll include some bonus symptoms to look for and some warning signs in your house to look for um, to determine whether you might have a mold issue. Um, I also can um, be reached at my website, and I am giving discounts right now um, on all of my um, investigation packages into health. Um, and whatever your health issue is, the FDN approach can um, really bring, bring about some healing transformations. Uh, I see amazing things in my, my clients, including a guy with, with multiple sclerosis who uh, was having yearly setbacks um, in his health and uh, hasn't had a relapse now in three years uh, after working with me. So um, it's just an incredibly powerful protocol. And I know you can attest to that as well, Heather. Absolutely, absolutely changed my life, changed my kid's life and continue to change the people lives around me. So thank you so much for being on the show today. So appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing your story with mold. And, you know, so hopefully those of you that are out there that can relate to some of these mystery illnesses and, and have the issues, you know, of, of doctors not quite listening and, and being frustrated, you know, don't give up, don't give up, don't, don't give up, up. persevere. The, the road to healing is long, but um, there is an end to it. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for everybody. Thank you, George, for joining me and uh, make sure to have a healthy day.
Thank you, Heather.